Hello everyone, welcome back. This video is going to be about using watercolors in your bullet journal. And I use three different watercolors. My favorites are the Reeves uh, red tin right here. It has 12 different colors and then a set of 18 also by Reeves and then the Grumbrasher which I don't use as often because they're harder to close. So I start out by getting my pages wet. I try not to get the spine wet because that is what will eventually break down your journal. If you're having problems with it destroying your pages it is a good idea to use masking tape if you keep getting it on the spine or want to have a cleaner line on the outside or what I do is just get the page wet and leave a dry rim around the outside um, and that'll help it also stay kind of together. And right now I just did a, a wash on it and then I'm dripping paint. I like the texture it does and then I just use my hair dryer uh, because I don't blow dry my hair I just use it for art and you want to make sure everything is dry, the spine, the back, and the entire page so that way when you move on to the next page you won't have to worry about that previous page bleeding through or being too wet and ripping. It just kind of sets all the paint so you don't have to worry about damages. Also I'm really impatient which is why I do that too. And right here I'm just putting some paint marks on here. I like how this came out and I just put a little darker color on the top. The thing about using watercolors in your journal is you can do whatever you want. If you just want to scribble, you can do that. If you want the whole thing to be blue, you can do that. Um, and I just want to mention that I do blow dry all of these pages. I just didn't put that in here because I don't really need to see that. And as you can see, I just put some masking tape in here like I mentioned before because I didn't want the spine to get wet, especially since this is a smaller journal and it has a soft cover. I just want to be really careful when I'm starting it that I don't damage it at all because I would like it to last for March. Which is another thing that I should mention is I'm going to be doing a few videos on setting up my new bullet journal and this one is all about the watercolor in it. My next one will be how I set up all my pages, the ones that are in every single bullet journal like your index, your calendar, your key, and all those things. So look out for those videos in the next few weeks because I will be coming out with them. Right now I am doing a gradient on here red orange yellow I use that color scheme a lot when I am watercoloring because I, I just enjoy it. it makes me happy and it looks like a sunset so on the next page I am just getting it wet still have the masking tape on there and then I'm just putting some paint on here I didn't really have a plan for any of these when I started I just worked with the paper and did what I felt looked right so a tip I have for watercoloring is use a lot of water and if things aren't blending you can just add some more water to help them blend or dab the extra extra water up with a paper towel or a napkin or things like that. I took off the masking tape really quickly because this sped up a lot. When I first started editing this it was an hour long and I got it down to 10 minutes if that gives you a sense of how much I sped it up. But just remember to be patient when you're working with watercolors because if you try to rush it and overwork your paper you'll get those little pills or you could damage the paper and have a hole in it. But just be patient. Let the watercolors do the work. This color scheme was kind of inspired by succulents with the greens, light purple, and gray. And then on this page, again, I am just wetting the whole thing, putting on this kind of teal, blue, green color, and letting the water move the paint around, and then adding another color. This one's more of a coral. I like how pastel this looks. This is another succulent color scheme. And then I go in and add the gold to fill in the space between those other ones. And then right here, I throw my paintbrush <laughs> and decide to use that other page on the left to just get all the paint off. And then while I'm at it, I'll just put the coral and then the gold in there as well and kind of make it look intentional. So like I said in my previous video, if you make a mistake, just go with it, keep working with it. If you end up hating it that much, you can paint over it or just leave it be and come back to it later. But I ended up liking how that that turned out. Then on this next page I'm using that same strip of masking tape and just putting it on the top and the bottom. And a side note about using masking tape or painter's tape is to try to stick it on the back of your hand a few times before putting it on the paper so it doesn't end up pulling up the paper when you take it off. And I'm just coming in with this really nice pink red and having a gradient. Now this is actually my favorite color on this palette because it is really concentrated and a super nice color. And I go back and just build the color as I work and then dry it all and then I start from the bottom with this gold tone. I'm using a more bristly brush to get that texture. 
and then I wet the brush and then go in and create a softer color on the bottom. Then I go in with a smaller brush after I'm done with this and darken the color on the bottom right by the tape. I really like how that looks when I am using tape as a border because it really defines the edges. And very carefully peel the tape off and then I flip back just to see what I have for a second. And then moving on to the next page, I'm using this really dark blue and I have not wet the page. I'm just going straight with the color, thickening it a lot and making sure it's really dense and opaque because I will be putting salt on this one. This is my favorite little trick when I'm watercoloring to have a nice texture on your page and then you just wait until the salt has dried or use a hair dryer brush it off and then you're done. On the next page I am just going in and wetting three strips and make sure that there is dry space in between them and then I just drip down the coral paint again, go back into the second line and make sure it is wet enough so the paint will move like I'd like it to and then I always make sure that the paint has enough water in it so it will flow down the page. After I'm done with the green I then go in and wet another of the stripes and add the blue. This is a nice color combination. When I'm watercoloring, I like to go on Pinterest and look up different color schemes because I don't always know what I'm gonna do and I like to have some inspiration, but most of the time I just like to wing it and see what happens on my paper. But these are pretty much all the techniques I use when I do watercolor. I like to experiment with paint dripping or gradients or different color schemes and lines. And my favorite thing to do lately is to use salt and see the textures that are formed when it is put on wet paint because it soaks up some of the color around it and you can get really cool designs and textures when you do that. All you have to do is brush it off after it's dried. You can either wait for it to dry or do what I do and just use a hair dryer or I think there's actual heat tools out there that you could use but I just prefer a hair dryer because I have it. Right now I put a circle of water on the paper and then I'm working with a darker gray color that's watered down and then adding this really nice blue and letting the water move around and add some nice texture and then I go in and add the salt and then let it dry Then come back after I've already brushed it off I didn't show you that part get this whole page wet and I'm taking this nice green and letting it drip down the paper like I said I do this a lot I really enjoy the organic texture that comes out of it because most of the watercoloring I'm doing is used for the backgrounds and not as a focal point of the page I'll most of the time go in later and draw on it with markers or pens and the watercolor is just a background that I can work on again for this page I am just getting the background wet and then going in with a really bright yellow. While the page is still wet, I'm going in with this really pretty pink again and dripping it down and add some of the coral on top. I love to see how the colors blend together. And here I was having some trouble while recording so I missed the end of that clip but all I did was wait for it to dry and then flip the page. Now I'm going in with the black. It's a thinner black so it comes out as a translucent gray and then I'm dripping the white paint down the side coming from the inside. I like building up the color by doing a lot of little drips so it becomes very opaque. Then going in again with the pink and then some yellow and finally the orange and I really like how the orange pops against that. I'm dabbing up all of the extra paint with a napkin on there. Sometimes I use my washcloth that I only use for watercoloring but most of the time I just use a napkin or it's called a thirsty brush so a paintbrush that is dry to soak up any extra paint or water that is wooled. For my final page I made three separate boxes and filled them in on the left side with an olive green and on the right with a darker green and then I dabbed on some yellow and then sprinkled salt and went back with a darker blue and let that pool together. Then I let it dry and that's it. I'm all done for now. I will definitely go back and keep adding to these pages. As I flip through feel free to pause it if you want to see them in more detail or let me know if you want me to post a picture of them or if you want to see other videos like this. I'm always open to suggestions so if you have one or anything else you'd like to say please leave a comment below as always i hope you have a wonderful day and please like comment and subscribe the link to my instagram is in the description below along with the links to all the watercolors i used and thanks for watching